3D Marios have built up quite a reputation. When Super Mario 64 catapulted onto the scene, the entire genre shut so hard that the ripples are still felt today. It's that pedigree that allows people to erroneously put any given release on a pedestal, like it needs to be the biggest thing that year. If there truly was a formula of some kind to judge what makes a great Mario, Super Mario Odyssey has earned its spot. Odyssey does what any sandbox game should, give us a heap of areas that feel different and fun to run around in. Atlas entries make everything seem like a real adventure, while segmented and brief interludes set the scene of Bowser attempting to marry Princess Peach against her will. No, the narrative yet again is the draw, it's the journey. What Odyssey truly nails is its ability to surprise you. The new rub is Cappy, a mysterious and never fully explained ghost hat that can possess, sorry, capture, enemies and objects. I'm talking your one of the mill Goombas, Bullet Bills, and Hammer Bros. Yes, you can become them and wreak havoc on their brethren, or plain old household objects like Cacti. I found myself constantly looking for things to capture, which in turn, allows one to reach new heights or depths. Sewn in the backbone of these galaxies, essentially, are traditional platforming sections, and 2D portions that are incredibly well restrained and not too saccharine in the sense that they're not trying to shamelessly appeal to retro fanatics. With Mario's locomotion at an all-time high, classic 64 concepts like triple jumping and backflipping are back, coupled by a few new cap-related tricks. You won't have any trouble getting to where you need to go. You can do all this by way of holding two Joy-Con in your hands, which have a specific waggle functionality that isn't nearly as annoying as what Nintendo tried on the Wii. Or you can opt to throw all of that together with a Pro Controller. Going from mandatory roll jumping in Donkey Kong Country returns into the myriad options on Wii U, and now, the Switch. Moons are the new stars, the focal collectible, and there's hundreds to find. You get more moons, unlock more places, and get more moons there. Bouncing around with fast travel and a level select menu makes it all easy, as do the sandboxes themselves that are overflowing with moons. At one point I found one, moved several feet, and found another. It can feel road at times, almost like it's a collectathon. And I'm not huge on a few reused boss fights. Something Mario always does. See Boom Boom for proof of that. But if I ever even remotely felt bored, I just swapped locales and kept playing. If a lack of direction and permanency or weight is a problem, you'll want to look elsewhere. Sometimes you'll just feel so aimless, running around getting moon after moon, not making much clear progress. As the game doesn't hold your hand, just provides you with vague quests and hints on where to find your bounty. Narrative cutscene hits are around a minute each, and the game could easily work without them. All that, along with a new no-death system, now you just lose coins, your currency for buying most of the game's items, are fine. As I worked my way into the daunting post-game, you need literal hundreds of moons to unlock a secret zone. Then the game asks you to casually collect over a hundred more. I was never really hung up on these. I was too busy watching Mario and Cappy read together and listening to a character named Uncle Amiibo that addresses you as sport, like Jay Gatsby. Has there ever been a bad 3D Mario game? Many would reserve that honor for Super Mario Sunshine, my least favorite, but it's a far cry from a failure. No, before any iteration of its flagship franchise, Nintendo ensures that a proper level of care goes into its plumber, and that streak of quality still remains unbroken with Super Mario Odyssey. But for more things Mario, like our written version of this review from Chris Carter, be sure to head on over to Destructoid.com.